Greetings, dear ones. I am Cryon of Magnetic Service. The real message that I had for all of you was given this morning. But it has to do with the unknown, does it not? That there is a system that you have within yourselves which hides. A consciousness of the body that stands ready to assist you. Should you wish to start a process of what I would call not enlightenment, but of becoming bigger in what you know. Bigger in what you know that pulls you forward and shows you things that puts you in the right place if you listen. Now this is hidden from you. As much is hidden from you. This particular channel this evening will not be an endurance event. <laughs> in fact, it's, it's a fun one if you want to use that word for myself. Now my partner doesn't know where we're going here. And if he did, he probably would not want to go there. <laughs> because it, it begs controversy within anyone who is listening, reading. But I've got to say the things that I've got to say. Here is the premise of tonight's teaching. Everything that you judge on this planet comes from the resource of what you know. And that then biases the result of the judgment. Every decision you make about what you find in history, every decision goes through a logic process, an intellectual process, one that is honored, perhaps even the scientific process, based upon only what you know. And that then brings you to conclusions that are often as wrong as they can be. There is no mysteriousness to this. It is absolutely agreed that this is the best you can do. How can you come to any other decisions based upon things that you might not know or be aware of? But what I want to tell you, dear human beings, that in this modern age, in this culture today, you don't know much. You don't know much about what is out there, what happened historically. You don't know about the past cultures who never left you anything to look at. You don't know about the things that you just assume were certain ways because you're using your logic and today's reasoning to judge the past. And so I want to, to bring up some examples, and this is fun for me. If you can, can use that word, it's delightful for me because I get to expose some things for you to think about because of what you didn't know. So let me start with an example that you will understand completely. I'm going to label this lesson. <laughs> Ancient energies frozen in the past. Ancient energies frozen in the past. Dear ones, cultures come and go. They learn certain kinds of things that are usurped by other cultures who can do it better. And the one culture will often drop the thing that the other culture doesn't need anymore. And in the process, hundreds of years will go by without the internet, <laughs> Nothing to look up, nothing to see, and these things are forgotten. Imagine for a moment you're a caveman. 
Imagine for a moment that as a caveman you, you come across a capsule from the future. And in that capsule, and my partner is giving me this now because he knows where this is going, in that capsule is a Sony Walkman. <laughs> now this is an audio cassette player. What does the caveman think of it? Has no idea. Absolutely no idea. Has no concept of what it might be. None. Now turn the page. You have a seven or eight year old at home. And you give them a package. And in it is a Sony Walkman. They will have no idea what it is. And if you told them that it was a music player, they still would have no idea. They'd push the buttons, they'd open the case, they would look at it, and there would be a frown. No concept. And then if you, you went so far as to tell them what it was and what it did and show them a cassette that actually could create and contain an entire album of music, they would roll their eyes. <laughs> Because they've got a device, a fraction of that sound, that size, it'll play a hundred albums of music. It's not in their consciousness. They have never seen it. The cassette player, frozen in time. The ancients don't know what it is, and the kids don't know what it is. What's going to happen to that? If you removed the internet, it would be lost. The whole process of what took place in those years that would play music in that fashion, the technology, the reasoning, the science, would be gone. Today you archive everything. And so this day, that will not be lost. But that's not what I want to talk about. That is the example that I wish to talk about. A technology frozen in time. One that is no longer used, but forgotten. Is it possible that there are others? And I don't want to talk about technology now. I would like to talk about processes, cultures, beliefs what you don't know. Now your DNA is not working very well. Less than 40%. And so when you see certain kinds of things, you're not able to pull on the Akasha. You can't go in and get the truth. You can only make decisions based on what you know. There's a place on this planet where the indigenous have created roads that go nowhere. First discovered from the air, they are so long, they are so straight, they are so accurate. And they go nowhere. And you take a look at the craftsmanship that went into them, and you can even see some of them were paved beautifully. Straight as, as you can make it. And they go for sometimes hundreds of kilometers. And they go nowhere. What do you think of that? And so the human being summons up the highest logic possible. And they may form committees. And they may look at all the possibilities of what those roads were for. And they will say, well, they did not have vehicles. So there was no reason for them to really build roads at all. Especially not that straight that went not even to another city. They simply went. Interesting, when you view them from the air, they look oddly like runways. Runways. So the next logical thought, because humans have runways now is that they are runways from the past. 
The next logical thought is that they exist because something needs runways. What is it? Flying craft aliens. Do you see the logic here? Do you understand what I am saying? That you, as human beings, are viewing that culture from your point of view and not theirs. So there is an entire group of humanity that looks at the long roads. We won't even identify them. Created by the, the ancients. And you will say they were runway. Those from the stars. So I'll tell you what they are. <laughs> and I'll tell you the folly of what you decided they are. And that's fun for me. Not fun for my partner. Fun for me. First of all, does it make sense to you that a craft from the stars that would have to know about interdimensional travel, that would come through interstellar space, would need a runway? <laughs> you haven't thought of that, did you? I want you to go back to that culture because you don't know what they faced. You don't know what they were doing. This is a place on earth right now that is barren. Nothing grows there, but that's not where it was when they were there. It was flourishing. But as the rain stopped, in their culture, their God told them to build a road. And they did. And they didn't question it. And the longer the road was, the higher the honor was to their God who would then give them rain. And it never came. And they built, and they built, and they built, and they built it as perfect as they could. And the longer the road, the better chance they had of rain. And it never came. Little by little, they died out until the last one was gone, leaving only the road. That's the truth. Did you know that? Did you know about their God? Did you know about their culture? Did you know about their weather? Did you know any of the things? And the answer is no. Frozen in time, lost in history, never written down without an internet, leads you to only think about the things that you understand in your culture because you have aircraft. They had to be runways. That's just one of so many things, dear one. There is a reason why I'm giving you this, and you're going to see it in a moment. Geology is much the same. We've discussed, discussed this before. You base all of your geological suppositions, what you see in the canyons that are formed, on one premise, that time did these things. But you weren't there to watch it. And you base that upon what you see today. A very benevolent planet that doesn't have a lot of upheaval. A benevolent planet that just sits there. A benevolent planet that, that is, is, is worn by, by time, maybe millions of years, to create erosion here and these things there. Let me take you to a 300 year period that created the Grand Canyon a long time ago <laughs> where an entire ocean ran in both directions because of upheavals in the earth over 300 years and carved that canyon so quickly geologists will tell you they find a delta on both ends of the canyons that makes sense to you it ran in both directions Ask them if they found seashells around there. And they'll say, yes, there was an ocean. Ran both directions. Carved that canyon 300 years. I was there. You can only decide that based upon what you know, not what you, what you don't know. And geologists don't know that. And they don't have that within them to even suppose it. Because there's no evidence. Because the timing is not apparent yet. 
There will be some things that they will discover which will lead to this. You watch. Someday they will admit that the entire thing was short-lived and happened very quickly. You see what I'm saying? That knowledge was frozen in time. You don't have it. You didn't have pictures of it. You don't have that today because the earth is quiet instead of one that is dynamic. And so you suppose that all of it was done over millions of years of a little river that carved the whole thing. It didn't. The ancients created huge, enormous structures. They had blocks of granite that weighed tons, taken from quarries a long distance away, building monuments that would seem impossible today. And so you look at them and you say, it was impossible. They couldn't have done it. They didn't have the technology today. There's no way they, they could have built them without certain kinds of machines. And, and that is your decision. And so how do they do it? Well, again, they had to have help. They probably had levitation devices from outer space. Now I'm going to break a paradigm and tell you a truth, and you may not believe it. No, they didn't. <laughs> the paradigm of your culture is everything has to be done quickly and efficiently. I'd like to tell you about their culture. Do you, believe, do you understand that they built monuments to kings who are not born yet? And you know how long they took? Lifetime. Do you know how many men were involved? Hundreds of thousands. Take this block of granite over there. It's fine. Take a couple of years and do it inch by inch. Pull it with sticks and ropes. We don't care how long it takes. Sometimes they were slaves. Oftentimes they were not. They were voluntarily there to help their king, the one who was in the womb of the queen. The one who would have a pyramid, perhaps, or another kind of a structure, perhaps, when he died. And they would give two, three weeks a year, all over the country. By the thousands they came to pull the ropes, to grease the poles. And what they had that you don't realize was math, a lot of it. They understood pulleys, they, all the things that you know about today about reduction of force they knew about. Clever schemes to slide things uphill very, very slowly with thousands of manpower in order to get them into a place where they could be turned. You think the pyramids look always look like pyramids? What do buildings look like when they're being built to you? Do they look like the finished building? Do you think perhaps they had things around them to help? And they did. But it wasn't in your culture, and it's a science frozen in time. Frozen in time. Though there are hints of what they did. Not many. That's the truth. But you couldn't know that. Because all you do is look at it from the standpoint of what you know. The idea of something taking years, maybe a lifetime, with thousands and thousands and thousands of men involved is not in your consciousness. You don't build things that way today. So you don't extrapolate that into the formula of what they did. We told you that the Lemurians had temples of rejuvenation on the top of Hawaii. It was one mountain Lifted up by the bulge that took place. There were glaciers up there. That bulge was there for thousands of years. Even before the Lemurians got there, it was there. The mountain of Hawaii is the largest mountain on the planet measured from the top to the bottom, even though the bottom is underwater. And most of it was exposed, pushed up by this bulge of the magma. 
That magma bulge very similar to what happened in Yellowstone Park, which is another hot spot of the planet. It is a geological process that happens. It's not a mystery. And it put the mountaintops above 30,000 feet. It's very cold there. And for a very, very long time, it was cold there. When you have the temperatures of minus 50 centigrade, and you have them for many, many, many years, you have something extremely cold. Now, the Lemurians used that super cold technology without electricity, without the knowledge of anything except chemistry. You can extrapolate heat out of anything with certain kinds of chemistry, lost in time, frozen in time, no pun intended. <laughs> they used super cold technology to create a quantum event on the top of the mountain. And that created the temples of rejuvenation and they changed DNA with it. They were able to actually manipulate mass through super cold technology. You are just discovering it today. But there are those who would say it's impossible. They could not have done these things without computers, without electricity, and you name it, all based upon what you know today to be your reality and not what you don't know. I'll give you the final one. And that's what we want to talk about. Dear human being, you think you know a lot about health, don't you? You got the most modern science, but there are things you don't know. Can you imagine being part of a health system that didn't know about germs? <laughs> and then when that discovery took place, everything changed. Can you imagine what it might have been like on the battlefields, even with the best doctors without the knowledge of germs? No matter what they did, the troops died because they didn't understand about sterilization and microbes or any of those things. Nothing. Until they got that information and then suddenly it all changed. So here is the premise of the day. Is it possible, dear human being, that you've lost something along the way? Do you have any idea what's in the forests of this earth? The shamans knew. They could heal almost anything. Gaia cooperates with certain kinds of energies and the shamanic energies of the planet were very invested into knowing about what I will call the chemistry of the plants. Within the cooperation of the Gaia system are the cures for all diseases. Did you know that? And they were able to cure so many things right from the earth, naturally. No side effects, no artificialness, no manufacturing. You've heard of this. They were seen as, as strange, and so they lived on the edge of the village. And everything they knew, everything they knew was lost. It was lost with, with modern ideas of God. It was lost when they would when heal somebody and, and it wasn't understood and so they became evil. Completely gone. Now, here you sit. It was frozen in time. And now everything you have is artificial. Almost. Now, here is the crux. My partner today did something I asked him to do. He spent time presenting to you what the new human being might look like. When you start to increase the percentage that DNA is operating at, you start to have the premise of children capturing the Akash, no longer having to learn to walk or to read. And they're doing it within a small amount of time, less than two years old. 
because they are remembering what they already knew. Now, this is new. So let us go to the next step, old soul. How many of you were shamans? Are you starting to understand this? Coming from the old soul group in the next two generations of this planet will be a remembrance of frozen technology. You'll remember the chemistry that extracts heat. You'll remember the botany of survival. And it will come to you in pieces and parts. And there will be certain ones of you who will become famous for the discoveries that are simply remembering what used to be. The beginning of a revolution, not in medicine, but in the relationship to the forests, will start to occur. And these things will be pulled out of the remembrance of the shamanic energies and information that so many of you participated in. And the biggest difference of why you're remembering it now and not later is because now it's safe. And three years ago it wasn't. And that is the difference between then and now. I give you these examples today of some of the foolishness that you see of the, the predisposed decisions based upon only what you know instead of what you remember from the past. And that is going to change. The higher the DNA starts to work, the more remembering will take place. And the remembering is going to happen from one specific group, the shamanic group, the old souls, the ones who would sit in a room like this all day long, listening to a talking head on a beautiful day. <laughs> Why are you here? Why are you here? Because you want to know more, don't you? Can't you feel it? Can't you feel it? It's in there. You know it is. I want you to drop into the core and begin to develop the intuition that you have. Dear ones, the old souls, not the ones who are yet to be born, but the ones who are here are going to find these things, are going to present these things, remember these things, start to use these things. And it's not going to be opposed. Did you hear me? It is not going to be opposed. There will be too many of you. It's going to be received very well. It's going to help heal the planet. That's a good message. There is a place for chemistry, for elegant chemistry. There is a place for the elegance of natural solutions. It all can be used together in balance. We always told you that. One will not usurp the other. But it's time to remember how to heal yourself from Gaia, with Gaia, through Gaia. Now you know why it's part of the nine attributes of the human being. And that is the message for today. One that may be remembered by many. <laughs> studied by a few. I am crying in love with humanity. I know what's coming. I've seen it before. Don't let... Don't let... The attributes you see around you fool you into believing things are not getting better. I told you that the old energy will fight back. There are so many humans who want to draw it back to the way it was, dear ones. They will not succeed. And so it is.